Good evening ladies and gentlemen, I thought I'd uh, show you uh, Mandriver 2010.2 um, It's been recently released, I've been a little bit delayed in um, producing this video um, but for good reason, I've been very busy with other things but we'll get it booting and we'll have a look and see what it can do We're going to run it in the virtual machine, I'll run it in full screen mode in just a sec, there we go So um, Mandriver is an RPM based distribution, it originally was based on Red Hat uses Red Hat um, package management system as uh, implied for the RPM based thing. Uh, it does use its own tool called URPMI and it also has a GUI um, to do the updates and um, the installation of packages. It doesn't come with some of the other stuff that distros come with. Um, for example, uh, libdvd CSS, which is a, a library designed to decrypt um, the contents of DVDs, for example, it doesn't have that for legal reasons. Um, the other reason too is it's a profit-oriented um, uh, distribution, and uh, so therefore uh, carrying these sorts of things it runs counter to the vein that they're trying to achieve. Anyway, we'll just take a look in a second. Um, just waiting for it to boot. You can see here I've got the little window, uh, rather the little mouse cursor. And uh, what makes this uh, distribution so interesting is a KDE-based distribution. So it competes with it competes with the likes of OpenSUSE and um, and those sorts of things. The first thing that's really apparent when um, when seeing this is a very very attractive distribution. A lot of effort's been put into making it look great. Um, I suppose it's a bit concerning that uh, some of the packages now are becoming a little bit outdated and lends credence to the idea that perhaps um, Mandriva is, with its problems that it's had financially and, and whatnot, is really not advancing the way that perhaps the developers would like. There is a fork of this that's intended to come out in the future, but we haven't yet seen a release. It's called Magyal. Uh, so you might want to keep an eye on Distro Watch for Magyal and also uh, take a look at Mandriver as it currently stands. As we can see, we're running a KDE-based des uh, desktop. Uh, uh, it comes up with this initial... Oh, don't know if you guys can hear that or not. I'm not sure that I've set it up for uh, for the volume. Uh, the um, but I just heard over VirtualBox anyway. The, the introduction's a bit loud for my liking. But uh, yeah, give it a whirl, see what it's like. But yeah, you can see here it's a it's quite a, a, an attractive desktop. We'll just shut that down now. Let's go through some of the applications we have. Actually, just first of all, we have this centralized uh, system management tool. Um, it's got the package management. Oh, I've got to put our password in, of course because well, well, a lot of the stuff we're doing, you can see that's GDK based too, it's not, not QT based, which I was a bit surprised being a QT based distribution uh, with KDE installed that it's, uh, it has some of these GDK applications, but you can see here we've got a wide variety of things that we can uh, select from, you can even manage the boot boot system, I'll let you guys go through a lot of this stuff, I don't have a lot of time today to, to go through everything, it has the um, internalization, internalization, yeah internationalization input method, so if you want to uh, type in Japanese or recognize uh, text in Chinese, that's sort of some, you know, these other languages, you can do that, it's regional settings as usual. Cleopatra, um, I really haven't managed to get a hold of this, but, um, you know, it's to do a security and crypto management, um, that sort of thing. Uh, writing notes, there's that program there, let's have a look here, we have in here a few bits and pieces, we've got Firefox web browser, which, you know, um, unlike other distributions such as Kubuntu, it actually has the um, Firefox installed by default, not just an install of it, it's actually installed by default. Got some pretty typical things here like your KGET, which is like the KDE version of WGET if you guys are interested, KMail. I personally use Thunderbird, so I'm not really that keen on KMail, and considering they installed Firefox web browser by default, I'm surprised that Thunderbird hasn't made its way in here. Uh, going on, we have Knet Attach. I'm really ne not into the network uh, folder thing. I'm just not really into it. Um, news readers, once again, not into that. I'd rather go onto Google or some site like that and have a look at the news there. We have Contact here, which is a pretty handy tool. But considering we've got um, uh, Thunderbird and you know we can install Thunderbird, it's got a very effective way of, of managing contacts. And I personally. Um, like managing contacts through OpenOffice. Surprisingly enough, I use the DV in there. We've got Copy, which is, say, the QT equivalent of Pigeon. Uh, so you can do instant messaging, K Organizer. Once again, we can use the Lightning um, uh, plugin to Thunderbird. It's 
It's my preferred way of doing things. Lightning uh, used to actually be Sunbird, I believe, but then it became a plug-in for Thunderbird, which is great. KPPP, well, sure, KPPP is useful if you are running directly off a modem to the internet. Um, you get your broadband, but in Australia, most people here just use a router. Um, remote desktop client, well, I don't really know what protocols it uses, but um, probably uses VNC, considering it's free and open source, but there, I think there's RDP as well, or something like that. It's a Windows-based or Microsoft-based um, protocol. I don't know if this uses that. Network center, managing your networks, and we finally have this cluster IRC. I personally am a big fan of XChat, though these days I find myself using, because it's light, I use RSSI. We have the usual candidates here. We've got openoffice.org. Surprised not to see LibreOffice because a lot of distributions, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but Ubuntu, for example, suggesting they're going to use LibreOffice. Let's have a look. We have GIMP. Gwenview, I like Gwenview. Uh, it's good. Uh, looking at uh, photos and whatnot, we have the uh, K Color Chooser, it's a color picker, and you could use that with Color Paint. Uh, this Color Paint business, um, sort of like a paint paintbrush type program, and K Snapshot, which I'm sure you guys have probably used before. Take nice snapshots of your desktop. We have here Amarok, mm, Amarok, nice Amarok. I've had issues with Gentoo with uh, in Gentoo with Amarok with the um, the back end database using a MySQL. We have Codina. I don't use Codina. Don't bother with that. Surprise! Once again, we have this Dragon Player. I would have uh, I would have been thinking that um, maybe VLC would have been used instead. VLC is a great uh, Swiss Army knife of video, audio, and all that sort of thing. KMix. That's an expected thing. Um, KSCD, I've had issues with this as well. Prefer to play my CDs through VLC, it seems to work. We have the Pulse Audio Volume Control there. Most distributions of GNU slash Linux are um, uh, moving to Pulse Audio or have already done so a while ago. Hmm, television viewer. I don't have a telephone, uh, television card, so no good to me. We've talked about the system tools before, configure your desktop, we've got the file manager here, we've got all this sort of regular stuff here, I think you guys have all seen that before, system monitor is quite attractive compared to the GNOME one. Accessibility, if you need those sorts of things, the ability to access your desktop uh, should you have some challenge in doing so. We have Anna Kanadi Tro. Yeah, so we have um, where, where are we? We have tools, we have Arc which is the compression tool uh, and extraction tool. We have KCalc, which is a nice calculator actually. Let's have a look at that. It's got some good things in here. Stats, science, uh, logic, you know, constants, you put your pi and all that sort of stuff if you want. Um, won't bother with that. But yeah, basically a full-featured scientific calculator. The only thing that's missing is probably a finance, finance calculator in that, which is probably sorely missed from the GNU slash Linux desktop. Uh, having a um, finance calculator. KCAR select was select strange and odd characters that you might use in your word processing or other other things that you might choose in there. It's quite useful at times. What else we got here? Tools. Uh, we've been through a couple of those. K notes. Mm, console, which we should all be getting used to if you've looked at my tutorials. Regional settings and once again the skim. Let's have a look over here. Let's do an update for fun. Let's have a look. As you can see, it's got a bit of a GTK look to it, doesn't it? Oh, okay, fair enough. Wrong password. We all make mistakes. Won't edit that one out. <clears throat> let's have a look. So we've got a couple of things here that it needs to install. So let's update. Go okay, yes. See how long this takes. My connection's not particularly fast, it's 1.5 megabits per second connection. We seem to be getting almost, well, sometimes almost that, that we would need. I just thought we'd just go through the package management, the graphical side of things. I'm sure you can check out your RPMI while that's doing that. Let's have a look at, we can go console. I should have actually pressed Alt F2. Let's see if Alt F2 works. Yeah, so we can get the console working. So Alt F2 is a nice little shortcut if you want to run a program and you know the name of it. Okay, so we have um, an URPMI 
You can go through this manual if you like and see how, how it works. I'm not a big fan of it really. I've seen plenty of better, how do I quantify that? Well, more useful um, utilities to update operating systems. What comes to mind is Portage. Portage is pretty good, but it's source based. So, um, Pac-Man. Pac-Man from Arch is really good too. Mind you, dependency handling in um, Pac-Man well, is pretty good actually. I shouldn't really criticise it. I think it's not fair. But anyway, we've got some things that we can do in URPMI. I had difficulty searching for packages and getting a complete list of um, packages. So I don't know if we just do URPMI Firefox and let's see. Oh, can't do it as a regular user, by the way. We're not in the right path. So, URPMI Firefox. So, uh, it's locked, of course. So, similarly to Debian's aptitude or apt-get or synaptics, we could not mess with that. But we've just done a full update there, so it's nice. It seems to me that... Um, uh, Mandro Mandriva looks exactly the same as last time, its previous incarnation. Oh, here we go. Look at this. The pro process is still using it. Let's see if we can do that again. I used to have this issue a lot with with it. It's very annoying. Very, very, very annoying. Let's have a look. We'll try one more time. Okay, so maybe we can kill... Oh, not kill all. It will kill this process and hopefully have some luck. Um, PSE. Oh, I'm not really familiar with the back end stuff here with this distro with the um, package management style. We'll try and see if we can get a. Oh, here we go. There we go. We can see. Oh, let's look for something we might not have installed. Ganache. Uh, tells us we've got Ganache. Oh, I don't really know how to search. Uh, uh, I've had, if you look at through the man page for URPMI, you know, search, search media, that's not what I want though. Maybe, maybe we can use search media, I don't know. Don't know. It seems to me that it's not as easy as aptitude. Or apt get for that matter. Aptitude and apt get. So it's just an apt get search, whatever. So a bit tricky. So yeah, basically we've had a, a bit of a re uh, preview or review over uh, Mandriva. Uh, we can see that we we're running in the v virtual machine anyway. I can't get the 3D going in the virtual machine. Well, I could with um, a lot of fiddling around, perhaps. Uh, you can get direct render working, I believe. But anyway, it's a, it's a very... Look, the thing about this distribution, right, it's pretty user-friendly. It's very, very, very attractive. Nice shiny bits and pieces everywhere. Um, you know, it's got a, a... I don't like to say, oh, it looks similar to Vista or it looks similar to Windows 7, but hey, this um, this taskbar looks really, really nice and it looks... It's a, it's a pretty professional job overall. I think I like what they've done with uh, KD... I think it's 4.4. We can probably find that out, actually. Oh, what do we got here? Yeah, we can just go in here, can't we? About KD... 4.4.3. So, of course, we're moving on to 4.6. My compatriot uh, Linux for you and me, he, or Caddy, as I know him, or his real name, which we won't mention here, he's doing a lot of uh, reviews on, on um, Kubuntu and Ubuntu, seeing how that goes. I think you should take a look at how the new um, KDE is going, the 4.6 RC... I think we're up to R is it RC1 or RC2 now. I have, I have to have a look at that. But yeah, basically we're seeing some good things come out from the free and open source community. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I enjoy... I'll, I should say I'll in bring you some new stuff soon. Probably should repeat that. <laughs> anyway, I'll bring you some new stuff. We'll... Um, I've got a bit of a, a uh, tutorial I'm going to do on... Um, basically ripping a CD, not just like ripping it, but actually making it so you can burn it again straight away. Uh, so say you want to make a backup of a CD, you want to play it in the car or whatever, hate it when the sun affects CDs or when you scratch them or whatever. I've got that coming up pretty shortly. Um, yeah, but anyway guys, happy YouTubing.
and we'll get back to you soon with some more stuff, more material, catches. <laughs>